lost his mother and his sister within a month or two span, and then shortly after his wife lost her brother. Amen. And then a, a year and maybe two months later now, her mother. Amen. I believe they're watching us today from home. I believe she needs to hear that. That better days are coming. I believe she needs that in her spirit that their family in Georgia are supporters of our church. I believe they just need to be encouraged that better days are coming. Amen. Amen. Oh, better days are coming. Oh, Lord.
Bible reads on this wise from the King James Version. Then Job rose and rent his mantle, shaved his head and fell down upon the ground. He worshiped God and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charge God foolishly. Can we all say amen? Amen. You may be seated in his presence. Verse 22, in all this, yes. Job sinned not, nor charge God foolishly. He sinned not, and he did not charge God foolishly. I want to preach from a subject today entitled Steadfast Service. Steadfast service. Friends, there is a reference passage of scripture given to the Corinthian church by its founder, the Apostle Paul, that I think is very beneficial to us today. As we know, the Apostle Paul was a preacher or a uh, apostle born out in due time. It was very untimely because he was Amen. A persecutor of the church. But the Apostle Paul is a, was the apostle sent to the Gentiles, sent to the sinners. And he writes, uh, Minister Odell, in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, these words. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Now I'm sure many of you have heard this verse before as it is rather familiar. And I am going to use it today as it aligns with our main theme or our thoughts. Be ye steadfast. Be un. Movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Paul is writing to a local congregation in Corinth. Questions rose about the resurrection from the dead. <laughs> Many of them have began to retreat from what they have heard Paul preach. Amen. And now they are doubting the very truth about Jesus rising from the dead. Amen. The Corinthians wanted to know and in many ways needed to be reminded of what was to come after this life. Mother dear, they were babes in their walk with the Lord. And collectively our faith was only 10 years old at this point in history. So they posed questions to Paul and he responds by writing a letter. Yes. They wanted to know what happens when a believer dies, mm -hmm. is resurrection really an option? Mm -hmm. Is there an exchange? Is there a promise? What happens to our physical bodies? Yeah. What occurs with our spirit? Mm -hmm. So the Charlotte, Paul writes to them. He, he, he gives them an explanation. First of all, he says, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how can you say among yourselves that there is no resurrection of the dead? Preach. If there be no resurrection of the dead, then that means Christ did not rise. And if Christ did not rise, Paul says, what are we preaching for? Mm -hmm. Come on. Our preaching is in vain. That says not only is our preaching in vain, but your faith is in vain also. He says, if, 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 if there is no resurrection of the dead, he says, we are false witnesses of God. Mm -hmm. He says, because we have testified that God raised up Jesus from the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, so if the dead rise not, then Christ is not raised. Mm -hmm. And if Christ is not raised, your faith is in vain and you are still in sin. Amen. He says, but 
not only that, if there is no resurrection, and if Christ has not already been raised from the dead, he says that all those that have died before now, yeah. they are perished in their graves. Mm -hmm. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. Amen. In other words, if you can only thank God for, for taking care of you here, if you can only thank God for looking out for you here, if you can only thank God, amen, for what he does in the earth, that's a miserable life. Because the truth of the matter is, friends, there is a life after this one. Amen. Hallelujah. There is a journey after this one. Amen. amen. There, 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 there is a land in a faraway strand. Hallelujah. It is a beautiful home built for the soul. Amen. It was built by Jesus on high to the land where we won't die, to the land where we will never grow old. Thank you, Lord. And the Apostle Paul is explaining to the church that Christ rose from the dead. Yes. And because Christ rose from the dead, all of us who are saved, we too have an opportunity. Amen. That when this life is over, yeah. hallelujah, yeah. and when that trumpet shall sound, Oh, I feel God in the room now. We will rise from our sleeping shrouds. Amen. The sound of that great trumpet. Amen. Thinking there was nobody will shake us. Amen. No alarm clock will wake us. Hallelujah. But when the trumpet shall sound, hallelujah, every dead man in the grave, amen, is going to get up in the Lord shall say the same. Amen. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. And the voice of the archangel and the voice of the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then those of us that are alive and remain, the Bible says, we're going to be called up. Hallelujah. To meet the Lord in the air. Amen. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And my friend, this is the message. This is the message that Paul is trying to get over to the Corinthian church. He is trying to explain to them that there is life after this one. He is trying to explain to them that Jesus rose from the dead. He is trying to get them to understand, Brother Bond, that if Jesus rose from the dead, we too shall rise from the dead. We too, amen, will have that opportunity to embrace Jesus Christ, amen, and embrace, amen, everlasting, eternal life beyond the clouds. Somebody say amen. 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 And amen. To further this point, he says something that all of us know. He says, behold, <laughs> I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, for at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Amen. And we shall be changed. He says, this corruptible must put on incorruption. Amen. All of our, all of our sicknesses and all of our illnesses and all of our diseases and all of our habits and all of our addictions. Amen. When that trumpet shall sound. Amen. Everything that is corrupt, everything that's wicked, everything that's not like God. Amen. For the believer, the Bible says we're going to put on incorruption. Amen. But I like this part, Mother Dear. It says that which is mortal shall put on immortality. Oh, bless the name of our God. Amen. All of us, all of us, with our good looking selves. Amen. We are getting closer and closer to the end of life. Amen. You might say you don't feel like you, amen, you don't look how you feel and you don't feel how you look and all that good stuff. But the truth is, baby, you ain't getting no younger. We all getting the older by the minutes. Amen. We are all nearing the end of our lives. Amen. But great be unto God. Amen. When the trump shall sound. Amen. That which is mortal, this life. Amen. That's wasting away. Hallelujah. This body. Amen. That's continually aging and getting this problem and that problem. Glory to God. When that trump shall sound. Hallelujah. That which is mortal shall put on immortality. Amen. And when corruptible puts on incorruption and when the moral puts on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the said that is written death is swallowed up in victory. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh great, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be unto God Amen. who gives 
us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. You might say, Pastor, why, why, why are you talking about, amen, the end of time? Well, that's what the Apostle Paul talked about. He talked about the end of time before he gets to verse 58. Amen. He tells the people about the resurrection of the dead. Amen. About our blessed hope to rise from the dead. He talks about the resurrection. Amen. In the last day. He is mentioning that. Amen. He says, but before you get too excited, amen, about what is to come, he said, let me give you final instruction. Be ye steadfast. Oh, come on, somebody. Be ye unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. In other words, he said, yes, there is a future. Yes, there is life after this one. Yes, there is a promise and a hope beyond the clouds. Amen. He said, but in order for you to get there, you've got to remain steadfast. He said, if you want to inherit eternal life, you've got to remain steadfast. Amen. He said, if you want to defeat death and defy the odds of the grave, you must remain steadfast. He said, because the truth is, Nobody's going to get in there with a lukewarm attitude. Amen. Nobody's going to get in there straddling the fence. Nobody will get in there, amen, with a mind that's all over the place. Your heart must be fixed. Your mind must be made up. And you must be steadfast. Somebody shall stay fast. The Corinthian church, they had to be steadfast. They could not afford to get wrapped up in drama. They could not afford, amen, amen, to go up or to associate themselves with preachers who taught them another gospel different from the original. They could not subject them to sell, amen, to false prophet and false teaching. They had to remain steadfast. There was no time for warring and discontentment. There was no time for strife and misunderstanding and confusion. They had to be they had to hold on against the tide. They had to hold on against the grave. They had to be resolved in their conviction. No matter what other folks were doing, they had to keep on hanging in there. They had to be firmly fixed. They had to be faithful, y'all. Go ahead and preach here. During conflict and during uncertainty, they had to keep their conviction sure. They had to be faithful and they have to be rooted, Sister Sean. They have to be grounded in Jesus. Hallelujah. They had to be steadfast. Somebody got steadfast. Hallelujah. Amen. They had to be steadfast. Amen. They have to be steadfast. And we too, my friends, must be steadfast. Hallelujah. We got to be steadfast. We can't be tossed with every wind and doctrine. Amen. We got to be we cannot allow this thing or that situation to sway our belief in God. Hallelujah. We got to remain steadfast. We cannot allow the troubles and the trials of this life to confuse our opinion of God. We must remain steadfast. We got to be devoted to God. Am I preaching? We got to be unwavering. Hallelujah. We got to be we got to be determined, hallelujah. We got to be resolute and uncompromising. Look at your neighbor and say, we must be steadfast. We must be steadfast. Yeah, that's the answer for the church today. We got to be steadfast. Amen. When life throws you a curveball, be steadfast. When life gives you limits, be steadfast. When it seems like, word of God, you can't take another thing, be steadfast. When you hit with one thing, after the next, God told me to tell you, be steadfast. Don't you bow, don't you break, don't you bend, don't you give up, don't you give in, amen, don't you sway, and definitely don't turn around. God said you must be steadfast. Look at your neighbor say, I got to be steadfast. Yeah, I got to be steadfast. I wish I would preach it to about two or three people in the house. Let me say, Pastor, I know what you're talking about. I got to be steadfast. Hallelujah, through the storm, I gotta keep holding on. Through the rain, I gotta keep holding on. Amen, when my back is up against the wall, I gotta keep holding on. I may not understand it all, but I gotta keep holding on. It may not all make sense, but I gotta keep holding on. Because time is filled 
my life. Sometimes, catch this, sometimes, amen, God sends the devil my way because he trusts me that I'm going to go deeper in prayer, that I'm going to go deeper in fasting, that I'm going to trust him on another level. Can I preach in the house today? Amen. The devil didn't send my trouble. He brought the trouble. God sent the trouble. The devil just brought the trouble. Amen. But if God sent it to me, I know he's being bad enough to bring me through it. Look at your neighbor say, be steadfast. Be steadfast. The devil, he brought Job a bad hand. Yeah, the Bible says that, 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 that one day Job gets a message. The messenger comes and says, Job, I saw the savings. Yes. And they tried to steal, amen, your oxen and your donkeys. He says, and I was the only one that, that got out to tell the story. But as that man is talking, the Bible says that another messenger came and said, Job, I got bad news. He said, I saw a fire, and the fire burned up all of your sheep. And the shepherd boys that were out there tending the sheep, they died in the fire also. And he said to them, I, I was the only one that escaped to tell the story. But then as he got done talking, another one came and said, Joe, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, he said, but, but I saw the shoutings and they were spilling your camels and they were slaying the rest of your servants that were left. He said, and I was the only one that escaped to tell the story. But then, glory to God, amen, as he was talking, another servant came up, yeah, and he said, uh, Job, I, I, I know you're having a rough day. I heard about your sheep, and I heard about your oxen. I heard about your servants, and I heard about your camels. Amen. He said, but I just got bad news again. Your children were drinking wine in the house of the Lord. And a wind came out of nowhere and turned the house on top of the children. Amen. And he said, No one of your children, the seven boys, the three girls, they all died in that house. And I was the only one that lived to tell the story. Amen. And that was not enough. To him after all that had happened to him, and after all that he went through, his wife said, Joe, why don't you just curse God and die? Joe looked at her and he said, You're talking like a foolish woman. He said, I will not curse God. But Sister Shaw, is that not enough? Joe started feeling bad. His fingertips. Bill was covered his flesh. It seemed like Joe had a bad hand. But instead of complaining, instead of pointing the finger, instead of charging God foolishly, the Bible said that Joe stood up. He ripped off his clothes. He shaved off his head. Fell down on the ground.
unmovable. Yes. Not shaking, but hanging on yes. to the Lord. Yes. I'm through praying, but you gotta be steadfast. Amen. He's calling us to be steadfast. Mother dear, I'm trusting. But if I remain steadfast, mm -hmm. he will mm -hmm. take care of me. Mm -hmm. If I don't give up, mm -hmm. if I don't throw in the towel, yes. he will yeah. take care yes. of me. I want to pray with you today. In Jesus' name, that you'll be steadfast. Not bowing, not bending, not breaking. Steadfast. Steadfast. Yes.
and try to reach out to him. No matter how you try to grab on to him, it seems like he's so far from you. God said, I'm bringing you closer. God said, I'm God said, if I restore a relationship with you and him, just you, God, I'm asking you on the whole. You and God, you and God. He said, I'm going to visit you. God said, I'm going to visit you in a dream. He said, I'm going to visit you sitting on the side of that bed. He said, I'm going to visit you in the shower. Hallelujah. When I visit you, I am my shame. God says, you're going to know it's me. He said, you're going to feel the warmth of my presence. You're going to feel the warmth. You're going to feel me take over. Take over your body. Take over your mind. Take over your spirit. He said, you're going to begin to praise me. You're going to begin to speak in other tongues. You're not going to know what's happening to you.